today we're going to look at how we model series circuits. But first of all, I want you to do this starter linking back to last lesson. So we have a series circuit here with four amps flowing out. I want to know what the ammeter would read here before that bulb, what the ammeter would read between the bulbs, and what the ammeter would read after the bulb here. And the second question is you've got a series circuit with three identical bulbs and a voltage to the power supply is six volts. What would a voltmeter read if you put it across this bulb here and this bulb here? Pause the video, I'll go through it in a minute. So in series, current is the same. So if it reads four amps there, both of those ammeters are also going to read four amps. In series circuit, the voltage is shared. And if it's identical bulbs, the voltage is shared equally because the energy is shared equally. So, of course, you'll have two volts here, two volts here, and two volts here. So today, we're going to be looking at how we model series circuits to explain what happens to current and voltage as you add bulbs in series. So you should be able to understand how electrical current flows in a circuit and transfers energy. You should be able to describe a model for a circuit and relate it to the components or the parts that it's modeling, for instance, the bulb or the battery. You should be able to use the model to explain what happens to current and potential difference when we add more bulbs in series. And you might be able to explain some limitations of models. So just to remind you, electrical current is the flow of charge. And you can see these charges flowing around the wire here. Those charges are fully all the way around the wire. Of course, you need a complete circuit for electricity to flow. And of course, you need a complete circuit for electricity to flow. Of course, if you take one of the bulbs out in series, or if one of the bulbs blows, there's no electrical connection for the charge to flow, and so the bulbs go out. So to help understand electricity, it's really useful to use models. Now, when we're looking at models, we need to consider the following. What's modelling the battery? What's modelling the wires in the circuit? What's modelling the charges, the electrons, in that circuit? What models the bulb? What models current, which is the flow of charge? What models the energy that the charges carry from the battery to the components like a bulb? And finally, are there any limitations to this model? Could we make it better? So the first model I want to look at is one that uses water. So we've got here a pump and we've got here a pipe going all the way around and that pipe contains water all the way through. So the water molecules are going to model the charge and the pump is going to model the battery. We've also got a water wheel here and that's going to model the bulb. So first of all, what's going to control how fast the water flows, which is, of course, modelling the current? Well, firstly, the pump is going to do work on the water molecules. So, of course, the stronger the pump, the faster that water is going to move. But also, the water wheel is going to resist the flow of water. So, for instance, if you've got a rusty water wheel, then that's going to make the water flow slower because it's got a bigger resistance. So that's modelling resistance. Now let's have a look at the current that flows. Because let's suppose there are 10 milliamps of water per second flowing in this part of the pipe. How much water do you think per second will be flowing here? Well, lots of people think that the water will be less here because of the water wheel. But if there was less water here, flowing per second would have a leak. Whatever water flows out to the pump flows back. So it flows at the same speed all the way around, which means there must be 10 millilitres per second of water flowing here because current's the same in a series circuit. Now what transfers the energy from the pump to the water wheel? Well, that's the water molecules are transferring that energy. So now we can look at how we can use this model to explain what happens if we add another bulb in series. So we've got two water wheels instead of one. First of all, what do you think will happen to the flow of water now, which is the current on Y? And secondly, what do you think will happen to the speed of the water wheels and Y? Have a think, pause the video, and then we'll go through it. So firstly, 
if we've got two water wheels, we're going to get double the resistance because the water's got to push through both of them, which means the current or the water will travel a lot slower. And if it's traveling at 10 millilitres per second, it might drop to something like five. Secondly, the pump is supplying the energy and therefore the water wheels are sharing that energy now. So they will be going slower than just one water wheel. So looking at this model, we need to know what models each thing. So battery was modeled by the pump, the wires were modeled by the pipe, the water molecules model the charge, the water wheel models the bulb, the current is modeled by the flow of water going round. What models the energy is a bit more tricky with this one. We can say that the water wheel goes faster or slower, but we can't actually see in this model the energy being carried. So that is a clear weakness of this model. So let's look at a different model that I use with my year sevens. What I do in the lab is I draw a wire on the floor and then I get students who are charges to stand in a circle equally distant apart. Because remember, in a wire, there are charges all the way through the wire. I then get somebody to model the battery. And to model the energy, I use sweets. So each sweet is worth a joule of energy. Now, when the pupils pass through the battery, the battery gives them three joules of energy, so three sweets per charge, which means the potential at this point is three volts because each charge is carrying three joules. The potential at this point, when the charges go back, are zero because they've given their three sweets, their three joules of energy, to the bulb. So the potential difference across the battery is three volts, and the potential difference across the bulb is also three volts because the bulb gains three joules of electrical energy. Now what we're gonna do is double the number of cells. So have a think, how many sweets and how much energy will each charge get now going through both cells? You're right, they're gonna gain six joules each, which means the potential here is six volts and the potential here is zero volts, zero joules per charge, which means if we put a voltmeter across the bulb, it's going to read six. Notice the voltage of the power supply adds up to the voltage around the circuit, and there's only one bulb. It takes all of the energy. So if we add two identical bulbs in series, how can we use this model to explain what happens to voltage? Well, how much energy does each bulb gain? You're right, each bulb will gain three joules of energy. They'll share the energy equally. So if we have a look at the potentials, we've got a potential here of six, we've got a potential here of three, three joules per charge. Now the potential difference across this bulb will therefore be six minus three, which is three volts. If the potential here is zero volts, the potential difference across this bulb will be three minus zero, which is three volts. And you can see the voltages around the circuit, the potential differences, add up to the supply voltage, six and six. Now let's have a look at a different model. This one has a conveyor belt, and you've got charges here, and you've got energy being delivered as boxes. Have a look at the model and decide what you think the voltage, the potential difference of the cells. You're right, it's six volts because this model gives six joules of energy per charge, six boxes, could be boxes of cereal. As it goes around the circuit, that six joules of energy is shared between the bulb and the resistor. So have a look and decide what the potentials are at each point. Yeah, we have six volts here, it's got six joules of energy. Notice the bulb only takes two joules of energy, so the charge still has four joules of electrical energy left. And then after it's gone through the resistor, it's lost all of the electrical energy. So therefore, you've got zero volts here. The potential difference across this bulb is only two volts because it only gains two joules. And across the resistor, four volts. Notice they both add up to six. Finally, which component do you think 
has a bigger resistance than one. The resistor takes a bigger share of the energy, so it's got the higher resistance. So we've got the whole circuit now. We've got our resistance, got double the resistance. We've got our cell of six volts. We've got our charges carrying six joules of energy, six boxes of serial round. We've got our resistor, double the resistance, taking four of those joules of energy. And we've got our bulb taking the last two joules of energy and the voltages add up. So let's just check what each thing models. Well, the battery is modeled by a machine putting boxes into the trays. The conveyor belt is modeling the wire. The electrons are being modeled by the trays, which carry the energy. The bulb and resistor is being modeled by a machine that's taking those boxes off. Current, of course, is the flow of charge. So it's how fast those trays are moving around. Energy is modelled really well because we can physically see those boxes of cereal or whatever they are. Each one represents a joule of energy. And are there any weaknesses in this model? Well, there's only one, it's not moving. So you can't actually physically see how fast the charges are going. In a minute or two, you're going to do your own modelling of series circuits using either models that I've described to you or ones that you might think of yourself. But I'm just going to show you two more, not in any detail, because I want you to see if you can work them out more yourself. So here we have a power station over here, which needs coal. And here we have the coal mine here, which is taking coal out of the ground, putting it in these trucks. Notice the trucks are equally spread out all the way around. And they're delivering that coal to the power station. Yet another model, which I like, is you've got a bakery here, delivering bread to the supermarket. Now what I want you to do is either make your own model or use one of the models that you have seen this morning in order to do the following. I want you to design a model to show how a series circuit works with one battery and two bulbs. You need to include in this model what's modeling the battery, what's modeling the wire, what's modeling the charge, What's modelling the current? Remember, current is the flow of that charge, how fast the things are moving. What's modelling the electrical energy the charge is carrying, like our sweets or our boxes? And I want to use this model to explain why current is the same all the way around a series circuit, why the potential difference of the battery is shared between the two bulbs, and that the voltages add up to the supply voltage. And for an extension, if you want to, it would be great if you could use your model to predict what happens in a parallel circuit. I'm just gonna show you my drawings of the models that I've used of what it might look like in a parallel circuit to give you some idea. If you want to look at that further, just pause the video. So let's just check. You should now understand that electrical current is the flow of charge and that the charges carry the energy from the battery of the power supply to the components. You should be able to describe at least one model of a circuit and say what each part of the model represents. You should be able to explain using the model why the voltage drops across each component as you put more components in series because they have to share that voltage, that energy. And one or two of you might be able to come up with some limitations of your model. So now go onto the worksheet and have a go. And I look forward to seeing you next week.